sometimes the water is calm and sometimes it's overwhelming. All we can do is learn to swim. Vicki Harrison. Henry was born to the late Callis McNamee and Johnny Lindsay in the Poole Parish of Manchester on September 10, 1944. With both parents being young and inexperienced in parenting, they were anxious to start their lives together as a family. This, however, was short-lived as his father, Johnny, had to leave him with his aunt Lubel Palmer at their house in Limits, Manchester. He did not want to leave his family, but he had to seek a job. He found employment in Nape and Clarendon, so that life for him would be more life for them would be more comfortable. Henrik lived with Lubel and their family for several years. Unfortunately, he was only able to attend school for a few days in the week. He then learned of the passing of his grandmother. This crushed his dreams of completing his schooling as he had aspired to become an architect. It was during this season of his life he began working alongside his cousin Yuali, Yu Yu, in spawning as a dry cleaner. He did this with such pride and dignity. And as this was now his main source of income. As a hardworking man who had only eyes for his work, all that changed when he met Marjorie Madge in 1975. She was a short and well kept woman and he gravitated to her like a moth to a flame. Every chance he got, wherever she was, as long as he was nearby, he would climb into trees just to have a glimpse of her. From there on, they became acquainted, and in 1978, they got married and started their family. Their union produced Four girls, Marsha Lee, Lisa, Yanni, Candice, Gabrielle, which is Yanni. Maskin was a jack of all trades, and he perfected them all. He was an exceptional cook. He prepared sumptuous meals, his rice and peas, and pork were second to none. He took great clear. He took great care in cleaning his pots. They were always shining, even though during that time he would be cooking on wood fire. Cleaning and organizing were a part of his daily routine, and he was very peculiar in the way he kept his things. If you moved it or you messed it up, you had to clean it up and he was not shy in letting you know how he felt about it. Washing was another chore he did exceptionally well. When it came to washing especially his wife's clothes, they were spotless. And he would take minutes to scrub them and they were immaculate. He did not need any excess detergent or bleach to get them clean. And I dare to say, I'm yet to see a washing machine that can wash white like he did. When he stood over the washing sink with his wash brush in his hand, all day was over. If you if you thought if you thought that was impressive, wait until you see the way he pinned them on the clothesline. They were neatly hung and displayed. He was a skilled straight person. He made cement blocks, columns, decorative concrete pieces, and stone walls all by himself. He was a designer in his own right and an architect. And he built his dream home 
where he lived until the time of his passing. He was always making tweaks and improving his work. He was always trying to upgrade something in and around the house. He was unique in his own way. If you knew him, you knew he would always be digging, planting, or doing something around the house. And yes, he had a green thumb. He was very meticulous, even in the way he planted his yams and organized his yam sticks. They were very neat and uniform, even from a mile away. He was very passionate about his farming, and he shared his crops with many persons in the community and even with strangers. He planted yams, sweet potatoes, plantains, scallion, thyme, pepper, carrots, tomatoes, string beans, cabbages, and other tubers. Castro would always be sweeping. It's all, it almost seems like it was therapeutic for him to do so. The only time he would not be sweeping is when it rained. He loved to listen to his radio. He would sit on the veranda with a cup of tea, shake his legs, bob his head, and snap his fingers, and listen to the, his favorite hit, hits. I can recall him enjoying popular radio station on Sunday evenings. He would particularly enjoy listening to oldies. And when he heard his favorite songs, he would shout out, Lick out Brother Lindsay. And then he would turn up the volume higher. Masken was sociable. And he would always be talking with the neighbors and friends. He was opinionated, outspoken, stubborn, strong-willed, miserable, and ill-tempered. Her. Let's just say you did not want to see him get angry. He was a bit of an oddball. He was a loner and he enjoyed his own company. He would make fun of himself and if you would hear him, he would be laughing as though somebody was conversating with him. Though he was a farmer and a tradesman, Make no mistake, he was a chacha boy. He was particularly one who, one with, he would, sorry, he was particularly one with dressing sharply. He would, he would iron the mess out of his shirts and pants and very clean and classic man. He was, when he was not in his farming clothes, when he was attending any special events or running errands, he would always be neat. His appearance meant a lot to him. He would always tuck his shirt in his pants and wore his belt. The color of the belt would always match his shoes. The seams in his pants and shirt were sharp as a blade. He was always clean cut. His shoes and sneakers were clean and he always completed his look with a cap but for special occasions he wore a Kangol cap. It was on October 1st, 2024. Daddy was taken to the hospital by Candies to get medical attention where he was admitted after complaining that he was not feeling well. After a short admission, with the, hope of, with the hopes of coming home, he spoke to his children, telling us to take care of ourselves. As though he felt within himself that his fight was coming to an end. He squeezed Candy's hand and thanked her for taking care of him. He was tired and he wanted to rest. So he did. On Thursday, October 9th, 2024, his heart stopped beating. 
his eyes closed and his hands and feet stopped moving. He was told, no more working, no more sweeping, no more building, no more crying or laughing. 960 months and four weeks have ended. For everything, there is a season, a time for everything under the heaven. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. Masken has left behind his wife, Marjorie, daughters, Marshalli, Lisa, Yanni, Candice, Gabrielle, Yavi, son-in-law Hannibal, grandchildren Brianna and Briston, nieces, nephews, and a host of friends and relatives. Walk with Castro. Continue to take your rest. Ta-ta. Thank you.